Dear brothers and sisters, here we are already the second Sunday of the Great Fast. And the Holy Orthodox Church commemorates the memory of the Holy Hierarch Gregory Palamas, Archbishop of Thessalonica. Each and every year on the second Sunday of the Great Fast, we remember St. Gregory. He was born at the end of the 13th century and lived in a time in Greece that was very difficult. Many heresies were starting to seep in into the church. Physically, enemies were surrounding their territory, ready to attack. And St. Gregory, being gifted with much intelligence and abilities, grew up in this area, in this time. And he used his gifts to guide the church back to the truth, to overcome heresies that were starting to take root, namely the importance of knowing God. There was a heresy distributed by a monk named Varlam who claimed that the teachings of St. Gregory were incorrect. St. Gregory posed and taught that we come to know God through his energies. We come to know him through prayer, through our hearts, and not through our minds. Rationalism was, was starting to spread throughout the land which, of course, champions logic and the human intellect, through which they say we can come to know God and even come to know his essence. But how, St. Gregory says, how can we ever come to know the center of the sun that's in the sky? It is impossible for us. And even more so, it is impossible for us to know God's essence. To know means to grasp, and God we cannot grasp. But we can see his energies, we can see his light, we can see his love, his mercy, his forgiveness. We can see his activity, and we come to know him through his activity in the world. But we come to know him through prayer. That's the essence of what St. Gregory taught, prayer. Prayer is essential to us. St. Paul the Apostle calls us to pray unceasingly. It is something like breathing. We breathe and we don't even think about it. We breathe because we have to breathe in order to live. And the fathers of the church likewise say we have to pray so that the soul lives. St. Joseph of Optina says that prayer is food for the soul. He says it's better for the body to go hungry than for you to starve your soul. Every time we pray, we're touched by God's grace. God's grace for the soul is like oxygen for our lungs. We can't exist without it. Saint Nikon of Optina says prayer is life. Life. We were created, brothers and sisters, in the image and likeness of God. We were created to love him with all of our hearts and to love our neighbor as ourself. The, our essence is to love. Our reason for living is to love. And to love requires interaction. 
To love requires relationship. Think about it, all you husbands, all you wives. Think about your marriage. Think about how often you interact. Think about when you dated. You were constantly talking, constantly sending notes, constantly meeting each other. Why? Because you were falling in love. And that love drove you to interact as much and as often as physically, emotionally possible. You were driven by love to interact. And as your marriage grows, you also understand that a marriage is only healthy when you continue that interaction. It's impossible for a marriage to survive without a healthy relationship, without that interaction, without that support. <coughs> Our interaction with God should be even more. Yes, our spouse may love us very much. We may love our spouse very much. But God loves us even more. And we're called to love Him even more than our husband, than our wife, than our children. And if we, call, if we love Him, then we want to interact with Him. We want to pray. Indeed, there are many types of prayer. There's prayers of thanksgiving. When things work out and we receive many blessings, we offer a praise to God. There's prayer, daily prayer, that we say before our meals, asking our Lord to bless the food. There are prayers that we offer in the evening, before we go to sleep, asking God to forgive us and to grant us a restful, peaceful sleep. Prayers we offer in the morning, different prayers, prayers of thanksgiving again, that God has raised us from our beds. And we request His protection and blessings for the coming day. There are prayers when we enter this church and prepare for Holy Communion, fervently beseeching Christ to forgive us our sins. There are all types of prayer. We see the prayer of St. Stephen, the proto-martyr, who prayed for those who were stoning him to death. Forgive them, God, for they don't know what to, they are doing. And Christ himself on the cross offered up prayers for those who crucified him. There are prayers of monastics who retreat to the desert. And they retreat to the desert and starve their bodies so that their souls will be filled with the grace of God. They're moved by the sweetness of God's grace to endure our, all types of hardships, only to be in communion with God. The martyrs offered a prayer through their actions, through their words, through their witness, <clears throat> laying down their lives so as never to lose the grace of God, never to be separated from Him. They're willing to even die so as not to lose that grace. Prayer is life. And all these types of prayers that we see in Scripture, in the lives of the church, in the lives of the saints, demonstrate to us all kinds of examples of how we should pray and how often we should pray. Yes, we strive to follow God's commandments. Christ says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Let us also love him by fervently praying. Especially now during this great fast. This great fast, the church calls us to increase our prayers and to abstain from foods, abstain from entertainment, to change our daily activity so as to dedicate more time, more energy for interaction with God. Because it's life. It's the essence of life, is prayer and love. 
So let us, brothers and sisters, let us heed the teachings of St. Gregory Palamas, who taught the importance of knowing, coming to know God through prayer. Just as we strive to know those who love us more and more, let us strive to love, to know God more and more through prayer. And let us nurture our faith through acts of charity. Let us strengthen our petitions for those around us. Let us abstain and keep the fast so as to instill in us greater discipline so we have control over our thoughts, over our words, over our deeds, our reactions. Let us, brothers and sisters, pray. And pray more. Because it's food for the soul. Prayer is life. The world is filled with hatred. The world is filled with all kinds of hardship and coarseness and confusion. Let us, brothers and sisters, seek peace. Let us seek fulfillment. Let us seek harmony through prayer. It gives us life. If we pray at home, let us pray more. If we come to church, let us come more for our life. Thank you.